Coming up, we take a look at the Redivis RT82 dual band DMR handheld radio. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. Thanks for joining me today. Is this your first time here and you enjoy interesting and entertaining amateur radio stories? Then be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell to be notified when future videos are released. Well, today we're going to take a look at the Redivis RT82 dual band DMR handheld radio. This is, video is going to be part of a three-part series. Uh, the folks at Redivis provided me with the, uh, the radio. Um, to evaluate. So in the first video, we're going to take a look at the features and specifications of the RT82. And then we're going to have two follow-up videos. Uh, the first of which is uh, we're going to take a dive into the programming of a DMR radio or how to build a code plug for your DMR radio. And then the third video is going to be a follow-up on, on any of the questions or comments that I've received from the first two videos. So please leave your questions below. In, uh, in the comments below of this video, and um, I'll answer them, and I'll highlight them in the third video on the series. But first, what is DMR? Well, DMR, or Digital Mobile Radio, is an open standard for digital modulation and a radio communication system. As an open standard, it's been embraced by many manufacturers and is used both commercially and in the amateur radio service. The goal of the standard is to, was to create a digital system that is low cost, relatively low complexity, and interoperability across different brands of radios. Motorola's Moto Turbo is based on the DMR standard, and scores of inexpensive DMR radios are available from overseas manufacturers. In conversations about um, DMR, uh, you may have heard of time slots and tiers. Well, the specification was designed with three tiers. Uh, tier 1 and Tier 2 are for conventional radio operation, and Tier 3 is for uh, trunking services. Uh, when purchasing a DMR radio, you're going to want one that is both Tier 1 and Tier 2 compatible. Tier 3 is not used in the amateur radio service at all. Tier 1 radios only work in a simplex environment, but a Tier 2 radio is compatible with both simplex and DMR repeaters. Tier 2 radios also have two time slots. Uh, time slots are like sub-channels, or separate streams that run simultaneously on the same frequency. So a, D so a DMR repeater has the ability to carry two simultaneous conversations, one on each time slot. That's why it's necessary to have a Tier 2 comp compatible DMR radio, as the Tier 1 models will cause interference and on, to the separate slots, screwing up the entire repeater system. Finally, one advantage of DMR is, is that the repeaters can be easily linked uh, via the internet to create a worldwide communications network. Since the standard allows for the creation of talk groups, uh, you'll find um, different channels or talk groups uh, for, for geographic regions or particular topics. Two such uh, networks are DMR Mark and uh, the Brandmeister network. We'll talk more about uh, talk groups and networks in the programming video to follow. So let's take a look at the radio. Now the first generation of DMR radios that found their way into the amateur market were, were kind of limited. As they were often used commercially, uh, they didn't have many features that, our, that hams were used to uh, in their offering. The radios typically were single band um, and, and had to be programmed using, using the computer. But the latest generation of DMR radios are certainly a lot more ham friendly. The Redivis RT82 is one such radio. It's a dual band radio covering both the 2 meter and 70 centimeter amateur radio bands. And along with um, being computer programmed, it also can be programmed along on the front panel, making it easier to change frequencies on the fly. The radio also has analog and digital DMR capabilities, so you can use it um, as your analog, on analog repeaters, making it a more useful handheld overall. So opening up the box, uh, the Redivis RT82 uh, comes with the instruction manual, uh, the radio itself, which offers 5 watts of transmit power on VHF and 4 watts on UHF. Uh, the radio also meets IP67 waterproof specifications. That means it can be submerged uh, for up to 30 minutes. I'm not going to test that today, but so I'm going to say that this radio is highly weather resistant. Uh, let's. Next is the battery, a lithium-ion battery with 2200 milliamp hours of power. Uh, the battery also comes with a little gasket uh, to help 
uh, seal it for the, uh, for the waterproofing specification. You also receive the antenna, battery charger, and a belt clip. Programming cable is provided separately, but it's included with um, the purchase of the radio if you order it on the Redivis website. See the video description below uh, for links on how to order this radio. As for the features, uh, the radio has the ability to hold up to 3,000 channels and uh, 10,000 contacts. It's compatible with Motorola Tier 1 and Tier 2, so it has the Tier 2 dual time slot compatibility. Uh, for use on DMR repeaters. Uh, the radio is dual band with a dual watch feature so you can monitor two channels simultaneously. Firm, uh, the radio is uh, firmware upgradable. It has a color LCD display and, the, um, and it can be purchased either with or without a GPS unit. The antenna connector on the radio is SMA female. Uh, this is the opposite of what you'll find on the analog Chinese handheld radios. So uh, you'll need a, either an SMA male adapter if you're going to use an external antenna or, a, or a, an aftermarket antenna that has the SMA male um, connection on it. On the radio, uh, uh, on the top of the radio, you'll find a combined volume and uh, power knob and power switch. You'll also see a transmit and receive LED and a little orange key that can be programmed for various functions. Along the side of the radio will be the uh, push to talk button, which is highlighted in orange, and also a side key to channel to toggle between the uh, main channel, main band and the sub band, and also uh, two other side keys uh, for changing channels within each uh, sub band. On the other side of the of, of the radio is the uh, programming cable and um, speaker mic connector. Uh, this is normally covered with a little, by a little plastic plate. It's a non-standard type connection, uh, so you may need to um, want to order a speaker mic uh, at the same time you purchase the radio. Finally, the front panel. Uh, the radio has a numeric keypad, two programmable buttons labeled P1 and P2, a menu button and a back button. In the middle of everything is a trackball selector. The trackball lets you change channels, scroll through menus, and select options. Uh, trackball, you know, is a little bit different type of user interface that I was expected to and eh, expecting, and it may be uh, take a little bit of um, work to get used to it. I found the trackball myself to be a tad sensitive, and um, it would scroll a little, a lot faster than than what I was expecting. But once the radio is programmed operation is pretty straightforward. You use the menus uh, to change zones or to select talk groups. Transmitting is easy as pressing the uh, push to talk button and speaking into the microphone. Transmit audio is quite good. I didn't receive any negative comments on the audio quality. The receiver is quite sensitive. Analog sensitivity is 0.2 microvolts. Uh, digital sensitivity 0.25 microvolts. This is pretty standard um, and typical for a handheld radio. Squelch level is adjustable um, via the menu or by programming it. And the speaker is loud, providing up to a one watt of audio output. As for my impressions on the radio, um, I like the look and feel. Ergonomics is a very important consideration uh, with any handheld radio. And the RT82 feels good in the hand, it's, which, is a nice, um, which is a nice feeling. It has a good weight, and I find it to be well balanced. The push to talk button is in the right spot, and, it, and all of the buttons have a good touch response. My only complaint is with, these, is with the trackball. Um, it, like I said, it's, it's a tad bit on the sensitive side. But um, if you don't like the ball, you can always use the side buttons to um, accomplish all the tasks that the ball would normally do. The menu system is laid out well. Uh, most of the features can be set uh, via software or through, um, or, or there's a few features that you're going to have to um, access through the menu, so a little bit of digging around for that. Um, the default setting for the zone selection is a little bit on the putsy side, uh, but this can be resolved by setting one of the programmable keys for um, handling the, the task of changing zones. Battery life is, is about average for a digital radio. Uh, full charge should last pretty much all day. Uh, at least that's what I found in my experience. It, you know, battery life is, is average without any other digital radio. It um, was performing about the same as what I found with my P25 digital handheld radio. 
As for transmit and receive, uh, the radio functions quite well. Uh, internally, uh, these DMR radios, you know, their insides are all pretty much the same, so you'll, you'll find that their on-air quality is going to be quite similar. Uh, where you get into the product differentiation is in how the manufacturer has tweaked their firmware and also with the, uh, the ergonomics or the, the, you know, the case design of the radio. As I said, you know, I find the ergonomics for the Rediv SRT82 to be quite good. Um, I would recommend this model for anyone looking for a nice DMR handheld radio. Well, that's it. That's my first look at the Redivis RT82 dual band DMR handheld radio. Uh, you can order the radio direct from Redivis. Uh, retail price and links to the radio can be found in the video description below. In my next video, we're going to take a dive into the programming software and how to create your own DMR code plug. And then in the final video of the series, like I said, this is going to be um, answering your questions. So leave your questions in the comments below and um, I'll filter through them and uh, follow up follow up on all of those on the third video in the series. And as always, if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I really appreciate that. More information and articles can be found on my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. And if this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell to be notified when future videos are released. You'll find a button right down below me. And also, check out some of these, this other video that just popped up alongside me. You may find it interesting. Well, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching. Have a great day in 73.